Hello everyone, uh, my name is Alejandro Cohen. I'm gonna be moderating today's uh, What's in My Bag that we're presenting with Amoeba here at Loop. And uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be here with Thank Juana. Um, I'm a personal fan of her music for many years and uh, we're both uh, fellow Argentines. And I've, I've been here in LA, living here in LA since 96, but I've been, uh, I've been following her work since then and even before that. And, uh, always uh, found Juana's uh, take on music uh, quite unique and, and interesting and full of, um, uh, how can I say it? Um, magic. Magic and, and <laughs> just interesting, <laughs> like, uh, like um, in, uh, someone with a, always uh, struck me as someone with a, a complex uh, um, array of influences over, uh, uh, that makes your music what your music is. Thank uh, you. It feels like always a, uh, you, your music is a blend of many, many, many other genres from different eras and countries, and I'm very interested to hear, interested to hear what you chose uh, at Amoeba as records that uh, yeah. had an impact on you. I just forgot to choose a, like a Beatles record because I can't deny that influence, but I totally forgot. We forget about the Beatles. They are so big that they are like above. Take it for granted, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. yes, yes. So just take it for granted. Okay, uh, well, should we start? Should we pick up the first one? Okay, uh, what's I don't know the... where to start. At all. Should I grab one? We may put something I really know or... Okay, um, let's see. Do you wanna... Let's see, let's see. the craft... pick just any. Craftwork. Okay. Should we start with craftwork? Sort of like a Beatles. Craftwork. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. So track three, is it track three? Track three? I don't okay. know. Okay, so is we that... have uh, Kraftwerk's uh, Radioactivity. Uh, this one yes, looks like I, a... I may say that, for instance, on this record, I don't like the very kind of, sorry, Kraftwerk, I really love you, but there's some kind of cheesy sounds at the beginning of the record that I don't like at all, but then it becomes, re I think, maybe over there. Just around. I don't remember. Let's see, I say we start with this, and yeah, this is Radioactivity. Can play a little more? Until the solo. Okay. Yeah. 
about it? That's the solo, right? That's the... That was it, yeah. Yeah. Yes. What, what is that that you find so fascinating about the, the track and the solo? Um, uh, I don't know. It's the sound of the synth for a start. Um, so round and so pure. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I When I discover, I, as I... What should I start? <laughs> as a girl or an, a teenager, I used to listen to records um, that I felt like a like a th whole thing impacting me without thinking this when, is... When you heard this? Not this, oh, any, any records. When yes. I, I would play a record and I would love a record only if that drove me somewhere, if that I took see. me like on trans a trip. Transport you yes. to and somewhere so, else. Uh, I couldn't. I wasn't able to make differences and to to distinguish. This is a guitar. This is a keyboard. This is a voice. It was a whole thing. Yes. So where instruments were just instruments to give the final result, which is music. Yes. So um, only as um, when I started to play music, to record, not that play, to play, uh, to to record music, and to have questions from uh, journalists and people, I started to, to realize that many, many things that I had heard when, as a kid uh, were th synths, for instance. But I never knew it was a synth, because to me it was like a picture, a, a trip, uh, like a movie. Yes. And I love when, when music does that to you, when you don't you don't see the musicians, you don't see the instruments, you just see the final result, which is the abstract, pure music. You know, music that paints a landscape. Yes, exactly. I yeah, see. Yeah, that was easier to say, but I just <laughs> wanted to make sure people got it. <laughs> yes, no, that's, that's great. And when, when did you discover Crafter? When was the first time that you can re uh, no, recollect? No, because that is not my discovery. Uh, someone must have showed me this. Uh, and then I haven't heard this in years. In you, years. I just went back to this record recently. Recently. Yeah, I had totally forgotten about this. Yes. And um, that's why, and that drives us to the... Oh, we didn't find that record. Which one? The, Coco, the Senor Coconut. Senor Coconut, no. But it's worth mentioning because uh, one of the things you were looking for was the Senor Coconut in su, su Conjunto, sí. which is, uh, I don't know how many people here are aware el of... Baile of Alemán. Yeah, El Baile Alemán, which is an incredible concept. Uh, it's a German musician that moved to Chile yes. and decided to put this record of uh, these kind of cumbia covers of Kraftwerk. Right? No, I wouldn't call it no, cumbia. No, it's called not cumbia. It's, it's That's a generalization. That. Yes. yes, it's bigger. I know, it's I know. like a I, huge so, um, um, uh, Central American band. Yeah, like in, like in and it sounds a, a blend of I different Latin so American rhythms. I am so mad that I couldn't find that record because it's, I would have played it right after this one and yes. it would have been a perfect... Um, well, what was your thought when you discovered Senor Coconut uh, knowing Kraftwerk? What, what was your... Well, it's the most uh, well-known... Um, songs by Kraftwerk, so yes. you have either train, uh, Europe, Europe Express, so when you... Yes. It's, it's funny, really, really funny, but it's even better musically, because it really... I love it's one of my favorite records. I think yes. that one. Uh, yeah. So if you don't, if you don't know it, just get it. Highly recommend it. Yes, highly. Yeah. Uh, should we move on to the next one? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, can I play? Can I pick something from your selections here? Yes. Um, I, I really. It oh, was oh, oh. a hard thing to do because I found out that um, the record store was a bit too much. Um, yeah. Northern, Western, Western. oriented. Here, I, mean, I couldn't find anything of South America that I was looking for. Yeah. But yeah that, all the records that have really influenced me. That's as something, a kid. yeah, we we're talking about like the uh, being in, in Los Angeles, a record store. It's uh, Hollywood. I guess. And, yes. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I love the store, but it's, there's a section that is not there. Yeah. I, I know there's records difficult to find because they're out of print and it's not. 
Exactly. Easy. Yeah. Even yeah. in Argentina, it will be very difficult they're, they're to, find, to find, so I can't blame it. Yes. Uh, I wanted to kind of keep it in theme of craft work and uh, maybe uh, look at some of the Raymond Scott choices. Yes, that, okay. Uh, can I just play any, any selection from there here? Is, um, let me see if I remember. It's a seven minute. There's, I it's think a it's three, eight track. It's a three part record. It's a, track eight. It's a triple vinyl. But I think is, it's um, the second class electronium. Electronium. Okay. Electronium. So we can put this here. Track. But you can't see the, what do you call the marks? Oh yeah, the, the group, the, let's see. Which no, track no, is it? Eighth. Oh, the eighth. It's very hard it's to hard tell. It's hard to say, yeah, maybe one, two, three, four, five. Exactly. Six. Should we just give it a shot? A bit further, how Somewhere many there. tracks are there in the, in the there are 11? Yeah. So, but Se this, is a, this is a seven, no, 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 but this is a seven minute, go here. Like there. Yeah, on, the, on this one. Okay. The, the big one. Because the other ones are just seconds. Yeah, this one looks like it's a long track. Is that the one? No. Okay, let me see. It's gonna be very hard to find. No, but look. Too bad. I would go here. Okay. This is a good example. Yeah. And we'll talk about let's let's hear this. I think it's an electronic, not electronic, like a synthesis. It's the. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know the name of the that. The electronium, I think it is. Yes, the but it's sequencer. Like, yes, so it has like the same shape, yes. but different melodies. And there's um, the most famous one is one called um, the baseline generator. Okay. That is has the same pattern. Yes. But, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, but the sound is so rich and so. Again, you don't, you can't get synths with these sounds anymore. No, I mean the sounds. I mean size, now they are remaking them, but it's yeah. For those unfamiliar with uh, Raymond Scott, uh, he's a pioneer in uh, music synth 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 it's synthesizers. A very sorry, word. Uh, and um, uh, he was uh, uh, a big influence on Buck Moog. So Buck Moog and Raymond Scott were friends. Uh, and uh, Bob Mo learned a lot from Raymond Scott. They have a very close friendship, and a lot of the designs that from Mo uh, were inspired by uh, the work of Raymond Scott. Uh, Raymond Scott was a, a very interesting uh, musician because he um, he, he, he was, was like a classical and he was and a yeah he, he big made, band composer. Yes, like yeah. uh, he did a lot of like Looney Tunes cartoon music for like uh, Bugs Bunny for commercials. And then he put out a record called uh, uh, Soothing Sounds for Babies, highly recommended. Yes. Uh, that if you play it to your baby, he'll probably come out as a interesting being uh, really out there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and this is, yeah, some of his other work. And the electronium is the size of a, in a room. It's, it's this huge uh, synthesizer that he created. Uh, currently own, one of the ones that he built for Motown is currently owned by Mark Mothersbaugh from Devo. And, ah, okay. Um, yeah. Of course. Yeah, makes sense. So. I love Devo as well. I didn't pick anything from Devo. 
In, in, it's interesting when, uh, when you uh, bring this music like Raymond Scott and Kraftwerk that uh, obviously are both uh, kind of cut out of the same cloth in a way. Uh, Raymond Scott much earlier yeah. and Kraftwerk you could say it's of almost course. kind of a, a, yes. a, a consequence of that. And uh, what, um, many times when I hear your music I hear uh, uh, almost like mathematical patterns. Uh, your, your music is so much <coughs> based on, on loops and loops that don't sync with each other, that create new rhythms. Uh, would you say um, this is kind of a direct influence of, uh, of that? No, or? because I, uh, this, is, this is not something that influenced me. I, I know this, I've, I've been knowing this for not that long, maybe 15 years. Yes. I can't remember when this uh, German person came to my house and and do you know Raymond Scott? No, I have no idea. And then I was <laughs> in, I couldn't believe what it was. And uh, I fell in love immediately with every single thing. And it's the kind of record that I could play and just go on a trip. It's not like background music, which by the way, I hate, but um, it's something that could drive you into very strange, strange places. And, uh, but it's, again, it's the sound. I'm sometimes on that, on that uh, song I told you about, the, um, the baseline, baseline regenerator, there's um, like detuning things that were on the track that I wanted to play, but we couldn't find it. It's very deep, you can't see. Yeah, because uh, the, song, yes. the record has a lot of very short clips, so it's yes. hard to kind of uh, and, tell. Uh, but I love the way he uses the detuning, and I felt so uh, part of it when I heard it that I loved it as I love myself. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's uh, it, in, it, touching in the, in the idea of active listening per versus uh, passive listening or having music in the background. Um, prior to being here on stage, uh, we uh, talked about uh, that idea that, that you really much prefer the idea of actively listening, highly focusing on, 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 on digging into what's playing, right? Yes. And, and even uh, have, a, have an opinion on, on the idea of background music playing in restaurants or everywhere you go to. Um, it, it's interesting because also uh, Raymond Scott created with a, a music, a Soothing Sounds for Babies, he's kind of the creator of a proto-ambient well, idea. Well, ambient is different because it's like a... So it... <laughs> Good feels the, it could feel the, the emptiness that people are so afraid of when they get to a... I was once in a boat and I had to return a car to England, a very strange story. So I took a boat that would take 36 hours to get from Bilbao to England. I said, this is gonna be the best trip <laughs> in my life. I was like, I got me a room with a, whatever it's called, the window. And uh, so I went to the boat, I put everything in my camarote, in my cabin, and I was so happy. And then I opened the door, get out of my cabin, there was this terrible music, terrible, terrible music, loud. I said, oh no, I'm having these neighbors. Yes. Well, how am I going to do to tell them that this is a boat, that we sh this should be in Hear silence, this is going to be like an amazing trip. But, I kept walking and the music was everywhere, 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 everywhere in the boat. And so, okay, I'm gonna take a blanket, I'm gonna go on the deck, I'm gonna forget about this. I take my blanket, go on the deck, there was music on the deck as well. So I went to the, I went to, to the girls that were working, I said, why is there music everywhere on this boat? And after a few moments of really, she did, she, they didn't know what to say. They uh, said, well, is that um, when, when there's no music, people just don't talk? Exactly. That's the point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is, is that not what we all want or is it only me? Because, yes. I mean, you have this. I, I thought I was going to feel the wind on my chest like Kate Winslet on Titanic. <laughs> and I was going to like have a bunch of seagulls following us and, and be breathing the air of the nature. No, nothing. It was impossible. And there was this music for 36 hours, except in my cabin. So I spent most of the time in it. 
Yes. Like, it was, I don't understand the problem. I like, I'd like to have a restaurant only to, ha to be able to not play any music at it. So only for that. I don't know what you would eat, but yes. you would be in <laughs> silence and hear the nice sound of cutlery, people just talk. It forces you to talk like this. Yeah, and then I went there and I didn't know what to do. And if you all of a sudden take the music down, you, people would be freeze and start to talk the way they should talk. Yes. Like you're talking to someone who's really close to you, and there's other people, you don't want them to hear what you're saying, and you yeah. have a nice talk, and then all of a sudden there's nothing. So I have a problem, yeah, with that. With that. When, making, <laughs> when making your music, do you, th do you think of that as the listener having an active listening experience where uh, listening to your records? Uh, do you think of that or you just make music and that's not part of your equation? In I, don't know, I don't think I understood the question. Oh, uh, well, like when producing your own music, when yes. you're composing, when recording, when yeah. mixing and uh, putting all these layers in forming this uh, kind of like image, you know? Yeah. Uh, do you think of, of, of the idea of your records being made for active listening? Oh, I have, no, no, no. I don't make the records for any purpose. I see. Any, any further you, you purpose. You don't think of what, how is the listener supposed no, to? No, and actually, when sometimes I hear one of my, which occurs really rarely, on a playlist of someone in a shop or whatever, I feel embarrassed immediately. No, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to. It's not like, oh, they are playing my records. <laughs> it, I really feel, I don't know, it's, like, I want them to have the record and love it, but I don't want to know. Yes. about how it happens. It's a, like a private thing. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, should we move to the next, yes, sele please. next selection? Okay. <laughs> um, should we go with um, something a bit uh, of this kind of older too? We have a soft machine. Or, should we move to that yes. one? Yes. And hear a part of that? And I think it's track. People that are uh, not familiar with the soft machine, um, this is... Um, this is a band from a uh, British band, uh, uh, also long history. And like they were kind of part of a psychedelic kind of, uh, for what I know, and pardon me if I'm not quite accurate, but psych kind of Canterbury psychedelic scene of England, and then uh, really uh, are more known as a kind of prog band, but really experimental, really all over the all over the place. You can even call it fusion kind of jazz at times. Oh, I and, hate fusion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, see? It's exactly this track. I can't see. Let me see, maybe this helps. Doesn't matter. I see, it's very similar, the same rhythm. This soaking crimson. My favorite track. And then uh, when did you discover the soft machine? Uh, much later. Much later. Much, much later. Because this one, uh, to me, it could also be easily one of your songs. And exactly. it's almost like I'm waiting oh, no, to, no, no, for no, vocals to come in. Way after. I wish I had known this before. Yes. Also, what, what uh, I find uh, in relation to uh, someone like Soft Machine or, or um, even like Raymond Scott, in the way you build the tracks in your music, I find similarities where there's almost a, a missing element, almost on purpose, where there's a bass, but there's not a kick drum, or there's a uh, hi-hat, yeah. but there's a keyboard and a guitar, and there's always a, a, something that deconstructs the, the mix yes, of I a traditional way. I remember when I, when I was first starting to, uh, daring to play music in front of others, um, and I had a friend who played bass, bass um, 
uh, we were recording little things in, in a four-track machine, and he used to tell me uh, that bass is wrong. Why? Because it doesn't go with the kick drum. Uh, so, well, bass and kick drum should do the same pattern. Why? Well, because that's the way you do it. <laughs> I said, uh, and I was confused. I didn't. I. I I wasn't sure he wasn't right. Maybe he was right, but I just didn't like it. Yes. So uh, it took me a, a while to, a long, very long while to, to do whatever I wanted to do because I always felt from the beginning that uh, everything I was doing was wrong. It wasn't the right thing to do. It wasn't what people would expect. And as I told you yesterday in our conversation, we, uh, I played very long loops. I have cassettes. like. The whole length of the cassette is just me playing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. And I was kind of driven by myself playing that thing until the, the cassette would talk. And then I woke up, and that was the end of the song. And uh, that was it. And then um, most of these cassettes and these recordings became the songs for my first album. But as I said, I wasn't sure about what I was doing, and I thought that it needed a part B, and it needed a bridge, and it needed a chorus in order to people like it. Yes. So I inserted, uh, I forced all these parts to come in the song, so it wasn't that, uh, like a... Just a loop. Just <laughs> or a loop. Or something. Uh, what I've been doing forever. Uh, yeah. Then I, got, I gained a bit of confidence, and... Uh, and that was it. And then it. I, I now now, you, don't, now <laughs> yeah. you don't care. Someone tells you that, no, of course. Yeah. I do care, but I don't. <laughs> uh, any, uh, should we move on to other, other things? Uh, I know... We can play Ravel now. Which one? Ravel? Okay. Yeah. This is uh, the track this one. that if you put I the think cover I there. found myself copying Ravel in... Um, let me see. No, this is just what people am I doing? playing. It's track, um, Adieu Pastorel. Here, do you want to tell me there? Yeah, where's the cover? This is too shiny for the camera. Oh, no, no. Look, does that work? They've... Oh, yes, it does. Okay, perfect. I just want to hide the name. That's under Which one is this? Which track? Uh, yes, let one, where is it? Where's the track list? Oh, um. No, that's the people playing in it. Oh, jeez. Here. There go. Sorry. It's, um. Oh, this is taking so long. Uh, where is it? Do you see it? Adieu, Pastorelle. Well, on the song, um, on my latest album, Hail. This one, track number that, 10. Thank you. I discovered that I, there's it's very similar to this. That's why I sing the, this at the end of the track. Thank you. 
so pretty. Well, this is one uh, fundamental record in my life. My mom would, um, this doesn't look very nice. I'm gonna take the price the off. Price tag. Yeah. Um, was this, so, I know that you spent a period living in France. No, this uh, is previous. This is previous. This is previous France. My mom used to play us this record and told, uh, told us the story to my sister and I. It's called um, L'Enfant et les Sortilèges. I don't know how to say sortilège in English at all. It's the, I don't know the name in English of this play. Ah, it's probably written in here. Okay, whatever. Uh, so she would play this to us and tell us the story while it was happening. It's a very misbehaving kid that um, is doing, the beginning of the record is really pretty if you want to just play it. And I think I am very influenced by that. Uh, it's all fifths and, uh, no, the beginning of the record. Of the, this is the, oh, sorry, it yeah, went yeah. straight to the number. So, there you go. Find the name in English for this. So this he tells He's saying that he doesn't want to make his homework, that he's tired, that he hates everybody, that he wants to misbehave, that to cut the squirrel's uh, tail. And so while we were listening to this, my mom would tell us the story. And she played this record a hundred trillion times when we, were, when we were really, really young. So I think this, I have absorbed everything in this record in a way that, um, I mean, the way you grew up and learned things from your parents and makes you who you are, this record is part of me. And I can't listen to it because I, I yeah, okay. it makes me really, it takes me somewhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, let's, this, uh, this is a crucial, fundamental record in my life. It's interesting without trying to read too much into uh, the, the influence of, of uh, this, this record. Um, uh, I, I do, you, I, you, you hear the beginning of it, and again, it's a, it's a pattern, it's a sequence, yes, and exactly. then the second uh, layer of instrumentation comes and it's out of like sequence. Our, exactly. And it's a, it's a constant yes. that I hear in your music. Uh, the, the thing That's of like why something I think goes this is a major five influence. by four and the other one goes three by four, yes, you know, and, and yes. things keep getting, in shifting. sync and out of sync. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's almost like you could almost compare it to the soft machine thing that we heard or we can compare it to some of like King Crimson yeah, stuff. Yeah, the or... funny thing is why would this, all these weird things imp has, have such an impact on what they do? Because um, siblings grew up listening to the same music probably and then if they are all musicians, they don't do the same thing. So that's why I believe that um, influences are actually awakeners of what you, something that is part of you already. already. You. Some, I think so. Yes. Because um, my sister is a musician as well, and, and she wouldn't play these records. She liked other parts of our influences. Yes, yes. Which it, were it, it seems like all this music, I mean, starting with Kraftwerk, I mean, again, I don't want to read too much into it, but it seems like these are all somewhat uh, very dreamy, uh, landscape, uh, 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 very visual kind of music, but uh, uh, all grounded to some uh, um, structure element that drives them behind. Uh, probably. Something like that. I'm yeah. not very sure. That's why it would be nice to play the um, uh, broadcast record okay. now. That's the song Echo's Answer, um, which is again similar to this. And everyone, I assume, is familiar here with uh, Broadcast, uh, the much beloved band from uh, the 
late 90s, early 2000s. Did you get the truck? Um, it's a which one is? Truck uh, 5. They always make it difficult person. to understand the track listing in their artwork. There you go. Who? Them? Yeah, in their design, ah, yes. the, the design of the things. I'm always. No, uh, one, two, three, four, five. five. This one. This one. The, no, the, the one that, before? The one before. Okay. No. It's no, no, no. What? Maybe it's the other side? I don't know. Is this truck side? Is this? That's what I'm saying. They always make it difficult to see one. No, it goes one, two, three, four, five. Should be this one. I think it's the other side, maybe. But it says on, uh, so the label is backwards. It's backwards, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. That's the one. so much. Love it so much. Did you discover um, a broadcast when, uh, when it first came out, the record originally? No. Uh, this one, yes. This one. But uh, not them. I don't know which, which record is this. This is their second record, I believe. Oh, okay, then pretty, uh, there's, there's, yes. Then I did. There's one before that I don't believe okay. was on Warp. It was, uh, I want to, uh, I forgot. It's the one with the orange cover. Yes. No, this is the one I, I the first one I got when it was out. Yes. Yeah. There has, um, would you say this one has a very direct influence on your music making, more of the, uh, the idea of production? Because I hear this more of a uh, closer to the way you produce your own uh, um, when this, music. When or does the this way... come out? What is this record from? Uh, maybe 2000, I want to say 2001, 2002. Yeah, then we are. Um, maybe? Then we Don't are um, contemporary with Segunda, which, is, which I consider the first. Um, album that really represents what I do, 
Because yes. when I, I made my first record, I think it's a great record, but I wasn't, I didn't know what to do exactly. I was, all the stories I told you about being insecure by inserting parts and trying to make like a regular song. The, the first uh, one is Rara. Rara, That yes. came out in 96. Yes, right? yes. yes. And uh, I, I really trusted uh, Gustavo Santaolalla on, on doing the great job he did. But um, it, at the end I was, but this is not what I would have done, uh, but I didn't know. So I think the record is very good for what, for the situation I was in. Yes. That I, I, I was confused and I didn't, I wasn't, I hadn't found my, my voice yet. What, what was the process in, in, the, in a way, what was the process of finding your voice or making that shift from, uh, from it was without Rara noticing. to Segundo? Yes, it's, it's, I got a computer. Okay, that's, that's a big difference. I got a computer, a software that I was learning how to use, and then all of a sudden I uh, started to record things little by little, and I was working for more, more than two years. In the meantime, I met Alejandro Franov, who introduced me to the um, keyboards world. Because as, as I was saying before, when I listened to all these albums as a kid, and I had only the impact of the pure music, I wasn't analyzing what was there. If there were synths, guitars, drums, voices, whatever. I didn't, never, and then the 80s came. And then I had a bit more of a conscious of what I was listening to, and I hated the keyboards and the sound of the keyboards from the 80s. So when I heard someone was playing keyboards, I said, no, 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 I want you away, away, out of my life. Yes. And then Alejandro came to my place one day, because he's, he was friends with someone. Hey, I want to show you some songs, blah, blah, blah. And he came with a keyboard and said, no, this is going to be a night. Okay, it's just one afternoon, it doesn't matter. And then he came out with this beautiful sound into his keyboard. He, he had a sequencer and he had sequenced a few things. And I was, what is this? I can't believe a keyboard could be nice. Blah. And, that's, and that's how I started to use keyboards yes. and to incorporate different, more, um, Eerie yes. sounds in my uh, in your compositions. Music, yeah, yes. what, what year was that? That was like ninety eight, maybe. 90, that was ninety seven. Ninety seven. Yes. And that was uh, that was when things started shifting towards. Uh, I know what you mean. Uh, I think in that when you talk about the early nineties to mid nineties, eighty synth music was just not something you dug. You know, no. it was just you could you know, and and, and you can. Get, go back into and rediscover and appreciate that stuff for what it is. But I know what you mean, and, and everything was very guitar driven. But I, I do remember that shift towards all of a sudden machines having this very intimate kind of use, very uh, kind of like your music. Your music, a lot of time, is almost like whispered. And, and I remember people started using synthesizers in that way. Uh, and like, like when you hear broadcasts, you know, there's obvious samples yes. there, keyboards. Yeah. And, and, and synthesizer or, or, or samples, and, but they're used in a very warm, uh, intimate way. And, and when I hear Segundo, your record, your second record, it's, it's very much like that. Yes, but it's because I met Alejandro. If not, I don't know if that would have happened. I see. Yeah, he really opened a door for me and I was in a little room working and all of a sudden this door opened yeah. on my wall and it was in this huge garden of possibilities and I really was happy all of a sudden. And, and taking it back to uh, uh, um, broadcasts and, and their music, uh, when you heard that record, uh, that, did it spoke to you in a way of like, this is something I've been, this is, this is where I'm at, this is, because it really reminds me of that particular record. Uh, it seems like you, uh, both your music and the music of broadcast arrived at similar sentiments, similar ways of expression, and uh, through very different roads. When, when I heard this record, I, I felt that there was someone similar to me somewhere else exactly. at the same time. So uh, when I went to England, I was lucky enough that she came to one of my shows because she felt the same way. So she came, uh, we were, I think, I think it was in, um, I can't remember the name of the city, in the mid-England, where she was from, actually. And um, so we were both so excited. Yeah, Kimberly, I met you. Yes, I met you. No, I met you. No, I met you. Oh, no, this, this meet. And blah, blah. And uh, we said that we should do something together. Well, and then that never happened. But we were like um, sisters 
music, musical yeah, sisters right. that had something. I don't think we are very alike, but there is a, a common no, of a course. common thing that um, that made us like each other. I think. Yes, yes, I, I know what you mean. Wow, yeah, it's a great story yeah. about uh, you and Trish meeting. Yes, I'd love to see that. Um, should we move on to the the next thing? Uh, I know you picked uh, some. Uh, um, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, um, some Sergio Mendes, some The Smiths. What that's, do you? That's the music that my mom was listening to when I was a kid, and I think all this music also fed me and nurtured me a lot, even though I didn't want to. Yes. As, again, I don't think influences are exactly what you what you like. You, you can you can like something very much and have nothing in common with it. Yes. I think that's... Uh, you, you told me uh, before, uh, when we first uh, were talking on the phone, that your mom used to play music all the time. All the time. She woke up in the morning, in her morning, like 12 or 1. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then she started to play music from uh, all day long. Do you think part, part of not wanting the background music comes from a reaction to that? No, I'm kidding. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Why not? Um, well, but this is, I, this is one that, uh, this was a singer, an artist that she, she used to play for you. Uh, she used to play for herself. I, I was in my room and had this, um, so this is a very, very long track and I wanted you to show, I was so obsessed with this, um, what do you call it when you do dabu dabu dabu? Um, There's a name for that, a scat. Scat. Yeah. Um, I was so, so obsessed that I learned this by heart, the whole track. And I Down was to a, like, each. So it, it was just for fun. Yes. And I needed to know it to be able to sing along with her. So I'm just going to play that, that last part. Okay. Uh, it must be around here. Maybe this is to the end. Loved it yeah. so much, and this, honestly, I, I don't know. Again, this record was one of my favorite. Um, but I was, it's not that I played the song. I, I, I loved in many records to play just a little part, over and over and over, like, ah, ah, like, like little, ooh, ah, yes, 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 yes. But I wasn't. I had to be on my own. 
I see. I had to be on my own at home, no one there, no one judging, no one thinking, what's she doing? Has anyone, did it happen ever that you're singing this and someone opened the door and you were caught singing? No, 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 like, because I knew there was nothing, no one, this was, did happen at the living room and uh, you had control of the whole oh, house. Oh, you, you knew the where the doors room. were yeah, coming? Yeah, yeah, everything, and you, you knew there was no one. You knew yourself, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. So, um, and I think all these records that my mom listened to and my dad as well, were are a part of me. Even though, like Bill Evans, for instance, I wouldn't play Bill Evans, but it was all day long mm. at home. So I must have something from that too, yeah. I guess. I don't the, know. When, um, I think for many, even here in the audience, I'm sure everyone goes through the same, where your parents listen to certain kind of music. And uh, maybe once you get into your teens, there's a reaction against that. And you kind of almost like, ah, oh, I hate that. Or that's oh, not. No, but was... then there's an age where you almost come around to like it, uh, there's, it happened to me, I think, I'm sure it happened to you. No, um, I became a teenager was... at 40. At 40? Yes. I see. Yeah. So I was a very good daughter. I see. And then so I you got 40 you never... and I said, I hate my parents. You, you, <laughs> you never reacted against the music of your parents to then later no, on embrace it. they were the greatest and they were the coolest and they oh, had I the see. best parents in the world. Yes. And, and, for you, and for then me, I realized I was so wrong. Your, your parents were also uh, <laughs> uh, artists themselves, uh, uh, musicians, uh, uh, actors, right? Yes. So uh, they were very much kind of... In, very much turn on to really cool stuff. Yes, you could say. I could say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were a bit, okay, things that I've realized later. Yes, yes. That weren't that cool. I see. But I love them anyway. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, should we do a couple more? Yeah, Maybe for we have instance, time? that, um, well, it was, it's not that track, but we can play one, a little okay. part of it anyway. My mom, when she, oh. It's, yeah, I know. Ooh. Takes it by surprise it when it opens like yeah. that. <laughs> um, <laughs> And this is, this uh, is a Sergio This is Mendes. Uh, Sergio Mendes. She would play Sergio Mendes only when people came for dinner. Interesting. It was a record for setting the table before the friends were there. So she was, she would play. It's a shame I, 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 I chose the wrong record. It was the Equinox that I wanted to take. I'll play for this here. Um, but let's just play the first track. And we can use this as a background music because that what it, that's what she was doing. Great. So she would go and be all dressed with a very shiny, long, 70s dress, smoking, <laughs> setting the table. And I saw that from her when she, because she used to buy like um, cashew nuts and uh, little toast that were called mini toast. And we didn't, we weren't allowed to eat them. The rectangular ones. Yeah, the rectangular yeah, ones. Yeah, we know the, from Argentina, we those know. Those were for the people coming. And you were not on the, I have a problem with cashew nuts now. When I see them, it's like I feel that I want to eat them even if I don't feel like And the toast them. too, you didn't yes. use them on everyday occasion, those, those yeah, yeah. toasts. No, 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 no. It was like for, yeah, only for, for, for guests. guests. Yeah. But the, I can't get rid of that image of her dancing around the table, one dish. It's, uh, for, I think for, for, for our parents' uh, generation, playing Brazilian music is a common thing. Yes. <laughs> She would say, she's the generation that would say yes when something was very good. Someone played a very good, yes. It was so embarrassing, but funny at the same time, so. Were there other Brazilian artists that your mom would play? Like Gal Costa, Caetano? Um... Oh yeah, no, yes. but that was for them. This is only for guests. That's it. For guests, yes. this and all the Sergio Mendes uh, records were for before the guests, like a warming up for herself. I see. She was dancing, ooh, ooh, smoking, drinking, la la la. It was so like a movie. Yes, and and what is your take on, on Brazilian music growing up in Argentina? Um, uh, you know, what, what's your take on, on Brazilian music and your influ uh, Are you influenced by that overall? I think uh, João Gilberto is a big influence. I didn't find the record I wanted uh, by him, uh, but all this very intimate guitar uh, singing thing. Uh, 
Yes, so pretty. because there's such a contrast in Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is the opposite of Brazil or Brazilian music. Yes. Uh, Buenos Aires can be very Gothic, uh, angular city, you know, where, where tango is kind of the opposite sentiment of, of a time. tango is something that came later. When Come I was later. a kid, yeah. tango No, but just the, the sentiment of, of Argentines in Buenos Aires. It's, it's, it's different, but you hear a Brazilian music and, and uh, it's almost it's as exotic for us sometimes in Buenos Aires as people from another country, even though we're very close Maybe not to for it. me, because I, they, yeah. my parents had a huge collection Fischer, of okay. Brazilian music. Yeah. So... Um, it's natural for me to, to listen to Edu Lobo or um, um, Dorival Caimi. Yes. I wanted to play Caimi as well, but I didn't find that record either. And uh, what is on the CDs that we brought? Uh, we have a few things here, and we have time for a couple of more things. We have the B-52s, we have tune yards, we have a bass head. That's, that, well, let's play a, a little bit of this just to change moods. That one, when, when you chose this, that one was interesting. When I heard it, I was like, huh, interesting um, selection. I think it's track two. Track two. And it was so different when it came out. It was something honest, that struck me really. I have no background on it. I heard it the first time when you uh, showed it to me. And ah. Can you tell me something about this? I, well, there was this group of musicians in Buenos Aires, and they were all talking about this. But they were talking. Okay. The mix is The sound was so new yes. when it came out. They are flashing at us. I think we have time to we'll wrap it up. You're having a good time here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is not it. Just... No? Yeah, but we can go, let's pick a last track. What's the time? We're over the time. We'll start wrapping it up. We'll... What you doing? <laughs> what you doing over there? Yeah, it's kind of cool. What you doing? I don't know. I mean, but I can't remember what year this record is from. But it was really new. It sounds like a mid mid nineties, maybe late late nineties, more late nineties. Late nineties. Mid nineties. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, mid ninety seven. Someone can find out. Let me see. Maybe it's in the back. I can't it. read. I mean, I can read, but I can't see. Oh, nineteen ninety two. See? Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. It was very, very new. I don't know what happened with them. Yeah. Okay, let's choose a last album to. We'll choose one more? Okay, we'll go for one more. Which yes. one? I don't know, it should be the best one, right? Well, we have uh, Skip James, no, uh, Mikachu, James. The Smiths, uh, B-52s. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, there's a very, 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 very nice track from Toon Yards there, but should we play the B-52s that are kind of forgotten? Are uh, they kind of forgotten? I don't think so. No. They are no. no they, they never but went away. No one mentions them as influences. They're still touring, or... and no, I don't know. What's your take on them? I mean, I love them, but uh, me too. I love the track that you 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 show me, like you wanted to talk about. It's really okay, interesting. Okay. Yes, I think that uh, the guitar player was one of my favorite okay, let's, guitars. Okay. Let's close with that one, the B52s. Okay. And uh, which song is this one? The um... the um, dirty no. Uh, what is it? Yeah, dirty back road. Okay, 
And this one is very trance-like, the way it's, it's sung. And, uh, very what? Very trance-like. It's very kind of like oh, monotone, well, again. kind of in a way. Without that note, this song wouldn't be what it is. You know that, right? Oh, that one. <laughs> that one. Say mid 80s. Okay. They were part of the Athens theme. Uh, 1980. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it's almost post-punk kind of thing, yeah. the style, like borderline. This one, when you when you told me about this song that you wanted to talk about, it didn't surprise me at all because it, I, it really... I haven't surprised you at all at any with any of my choices. No, no, I think some others. I'm so predictable. Some, no, no, no. <laughs> Particularly this one because I could hear, I, I could imagine you singing a melody like this. Oh yeah, it, well it's, yes. It's that tone of voice. It's just the, the use of rhythm, the use of patterns, and yeah. like you say, you're like bringing up that precise note as the thing that drives the song. I think that's like. That, that, I mean, it's, that guy was so, I, I was, so, I, so I found it I interesting, wish, I wish I could but, uh, have married him. But, uh, but I could see the connection with your music, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then when, did you discover uh, B-52s at the time when it came out? Uh, yeah, in, yeah. In, yeah. This yeah, was yeah. part it of was, your Yes, well, teenage. it was like a very huge thing. How could you not be aware of that? Yes. Uh, and and it, it blew my mind away. When, where was this when you discovered B-52s or when you were listening to this kind of scene, this I type was, of music? I was still in Paris. You are still in Paris? Yes. I was, still, I was just about to come back home. Yes. Uh, we need to, they are need desperately to okay. telling us to okay. leave well, we'll, the Okay, well, we'll close with this story. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and then when you came back to Buenos Aires, you kind of came back with all these new sounds, this music. Uh, that probably wasn't getting there yet. I think that, yeah, no, I think the most thing that influenced me in France was a radio called Radio, radio France uh, that played music from all over the world. And then when I was a very young teenager, uh, uh, discovered like music from the Aka Pygmies or uh, music from Malawi, from the Ile Salomon, yeah. from all this out of the world out that had nothing to do, and the only way to listen to that music was by listening to these shows at That's the it. radio. And I, I felt so driven by this um, pygmy music yes. that uh, still all that thing becomes part of what I do now, I think. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, Juana, oh, for, thank you. for uh, thank you. joining today. And I wish I had, I, I had the chance to show you uh, a few South American records that I highly recommend, like yes. Eduardo Mateo and that kind of thing. That was also a big part of who I am now. Okay, well, hopefully next time. Yeah. We'll do it for part Thank two. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for coming.